building the messaging machine, the COVID-19 um, response project, uh, building the coronavirus maps, slicing and dicing the data to make it say certain things that serve their interests, building the distance learning platforms, building the track and trace apps, um, and really cannibalizing you. And really the, this, you are, they are not gonna let you go. I mean, I'm just saying that if you, um, if you don't understand, you know, that they are not gonna let you go, right? It's not like there's gonna be a day when you wake up and the headlines will say, okay, numbers are at a reasonable level of infection um this this virus has you know pretty much done its worst with human population we're on the upswing everyone can come out now you can hug your mom you can send your child to school you know you can get off the screens that will not happen i'm, ah, I'm telling you that will not happen because this is so profitable okay and that is not minimizing how serious this virus is or how serious this pandemic is it's that we have to be grown-ups and think two things at the same time um a there's a serious you know illness i know people have had it it's real b it's being exploited to change human human civilization forever unless we resist so that we are never getting out we will have to say please master release me for the rest of our lives uh, because it is so profitable for them to drive all human interaction onto digital technology and to track and trace us forever and also you know this goes to things i've been writing about since the end of america um there's always a war on liberty no one who's powerful wants you to be free no one who's powerful wants you to be able to change your elected officials because right where we are, right, unable to communicate in a town hall, unable to have a conversation that's not, you know, recorded on Zoom, which is owned by people who are not private and not our friends, um, not able to, you know, fall in love freely, to uh, congregate freely, to worship freely, that, you know, we are weak as humans, we are weak as a society, um, in relation to people who want to strip us of our liberties so they can stay in power forever and people who want to plunder, you know, basically our nations, as is happening in Australia, in Britain and in the United States right now. And finally, the people, big tech and big pharma, who literally would love to have us never, ever, ever, ever leave our homes again and be subject to whatever, you know, intervention uh, is the latest that is lucrative um, that we will allow in our bodies or not even have consent for um, because there will be mandates that anything can be injected into us or our bodies can be manipulated in various ways as is already happening that you know do not be a battered wife right do not fall prey to Stockholm syndrome do not think if you're just good he will stop beating you or she will stop beating you he won't stop beating you you will not be released. You have to take matters into your own hands. So how can you do this? Um, I'll get to that a, a little bit. I just wanna say there's some movements that are positive in Portugal. This past week, a judge uh, ruled that it is um, a violation of human liberty to restrain healthy people in quarantine. And I've written an essay about how quarantine you know, lockdown is not quarantine. It's lockdown is beyond what any free society has ever, ever done. So in Portugal, a judge said it's a, it's a violation of human liberty to restrain healthy people, to restrain their liberty. And there's also a tension on the PCR tests. Um, and that decision said the PCR tests are not accurate enough to constrain people's liberties on the basis of them. So if other countries follow the lead, of uh of portugal um you know that's certainly the way to go uh our supreme court rejected a, a lockdown measure here in new york state governor cuomo wanted to forbid people from gathering to pray and the supreme court said no and a lot of my friends i'm on the left were um opposed to that ruling and thought that um it was kind of a crazy conservative ruling but you know the constitution is very clear we have freedom to assemble first amendment freedom to worship first amendment 
So that was absolutely a good ruling. And so there have to be more and more lawsuits. There have to be more and more uh, demands, you know, through the legal system to uh, require our, our human rights to be given back to us. And again, this is not to say there aren't careful things that need to be done in a public health crisis. But as one lawyer pointed out to me, like with closing the baths briefly during the HIV uh, epidemic, um, you know, these things have to be proportionate, they have to be short of duration, and they have to be subject to legal review. And that is not you know, what we're seeing now in these wholesale closures. So now I want to drill down a little bit um, into a couple of horrible flaws in the COVID data that is being presented to you. So first of all, COVID-19 tracking um, is a project hosted by not even a medical site, hosted by The Atlantic magazine, which is a magazine here in the United States. I've often said, because I drilled into the numbers, their methodology is to uh, have unnamed volunteers upload unverifiable data. That's their methodology. But every major news outlet cites COVID-19 tracking, which is bizarre to me. So as I've said before, the only real data sets that are solid, at least in the United States, are state health departments. Um, those are good numbers, generally. Uh, and those are going to be um, reports from doctor's offices and reports from clinics and hospitals. And also death counts are pretty solid um, from state health departments, even though we know for sure that when someone is hit by a bus and has COVID, it's listed as a COVID death. If someone dies of cancer and has COVID, it's listed as a COVID death. But even when there's something really scary that's happening with uh, maps like COVID-19 tracking, and I'll tell you what it is. They are all reporting their numbers cumulatively. And this is happening in France, and it's happening in the UK, and it's happening in America. And what do I mean? Um, in Oregon, there is, for instance, a statement in all the news sites that um, 890 people died of COVID. And you'll see that. You'll see, you know, there are a quarter of a million deaths from COVID. Well, that may well be true, but the way it's reported is today, right? Today, December 10th, 890 people died of COVID. That's always how it's presented. That like that that cumulative number is presented in these maps very misleadingly as today's number and so you go oh my god <clears throat> but it's not true and i did the math for oregon where my mom lives and if you divide it by 12 you get about 80 people dying a month and then you map it against the other causes of death for oregon um and you see that it's like number eight or nine or ten in oregon for causes of death not trivial. I don't mean to diminish every loss is tragic. All those families are grieving, but it's the same cause of death number as suicide or drug overdoses. So my poor mom is not going out, not seeing loved ones, not letting me hug her, living like a prisoner, which affects her, you know, health and well-being. But when I explained to her that actually 890 people didn't die today, 890 people have ever died, and you have the same chance of dying of COVID as you do of dying of suicide or a fatal drug overdose in Oregon, it's the same numbers, right? But she understands them now, and she's making different decisions about her daily life that I think are better informed decisions. So, but that's what we're seeing over and over and over. Cumulative numbers are presented as if they're today. The other thing that does when you map numbers cumulatively is every day you see a sharp rise to the right, a sharp rise to the right, a sharp rise to the right on a map. And that's what you see. And you go, oh, no, this is catastrophic. But when you map numbers cumulatively that go back to a year, right? you are going to get every day a sharp rise, a sharp rise, a sharp rise, because the last day's numbers, even if they're lower than the day before, 
are added to the total. So it's always going to go up. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm going to say it again. Someone said, so he said, uh, highly dubious and inaccurate, but not exactly lying. So I'm going to say it again because it's so important. Every day you open the paper, you turn on your computer, there are these giant maps that have a sharp, steep rise to the right, coronavirus, cases, and deaths. Again, these are cumulative. So if on Monday, 20 people died, and on Tuesday, 10 people died, and on Wednesday, three people died, when you map it cumulatively, it's going to go up and up and up because it's going to go 10, 5, 3, you know, because you can't undo what happened in the past. You're adding to it. So even if it goes down to zero, right, it's, it's never going to stop as long as anyone ever dies again in the future. So you have to understand that, right? And North Dakota, which has been getting um, a lot of uh, flack um, for uh, not going along with coronavirus um, hysteria, really, again, disproportionate to the real threat, much like terrorism, it was a real threat, but thank you, South Dakota. I actually meant to say South Dakota. Uh, their COVID maps look really, really different. Let me map it and then we'll upload these so we can show you. We haven't figured out how to do it simultaneously. On the South Dakota COVID map, it's got that steep, steep rise to the right of the cumulative numbers. But they also add the line for recovered under that. And that's 85% of the total. So you see the line under it of people who've recovered. And then they subtract the people who have recovered from the total cases and they get a number that kind of goes like this. Okay, it's up and down, up and down, trending down. That's how many people are still sick. And then there's a deaths number. And those are the real numbers. But if you looked at those real numbers, you know, taking away people who've recovered, then you do not get that steep rise to the right. You get a much more moderate curve. Nothing to ignore, but much more moderate. And the other thing you need to do when you do this math is, is divide by population. When you get cases, cases and tests, which is this giant scare headline that everyone is announcing, um, what are you what are you measuring? You're measuring people who already think it's a good idea to get a coronavirus test. So it's a self-selected population, and then it's showing the positives of that self-selected group. So of course, the more you test, the higher the numbers are going to be, even if the numbers in the population are going down. You understand that the only way to get real data about how prevalent the infection is in your community is to test people randomly, right? Test the population randomly. Then you can see if numbers are really going up or going down. But that's not what you're seeing. You're seeing self-selected people who are more likely to be symptomatic. Uh, and the more they test, the higher the numbers are going to be. And there's a last thing I really, really want to say, and Elias K says, Naomi, look at cause mortality from South Dakota on CDC website, no excess deaths in March, April, May. And I just want to say something else about the CDC, so sneaky. They started to report COVID deaths as PIC, pneumonia, influenza, COVID, because it's a more robust number. So they're lumping them together. You always are going to have tens of thousands of people dying of pneumonia. It's very sad. It's true. You're going to have tens of thousands of people dying from influenza. It's very sad. So now they're lumping coronavirus deaths together with these guaranteed deaths. In 2017, 70,000 people died in the United States from influenza. So that is sneaky as well. And then the last thing I want to say, which is so sneaky and evil, and, and I say this have, being the, the president, uh, I'm sorry, the CEO of a data site, right, is I kept saying they're counting multiple tests of one person as multiple cases. I am sure of that because no one could present to me the metric. And, and at Daily Cloud, my company, we worked really hard to make this happen. When you run a data site, you have to make sure that you're controlling to make sure one person, in my case, doesn't vote multiple times, thus counted as multiple people, right? And that's why you have logins, right? The login and the password 
uh, guarantees that like on daily cloud, if we didn't rule out by having a login and a password, then, you know, AstroTurf campaigns could send five people that they hire to vote 500 times and it would look like 500 people voted a certain way on a bill, right? So we had to carefully control for that, put up a gate, create technology, and it's very common, it's not difficult technology, that makes sure that one person is counted as one action on our website. Well, with COVID data, they're not doing that, right? Because it's illegal. HIPAA law says you can't count people by using PID, which is personally identifiable data. You can't use people's names. All right, so if you're not using people's names, all you're getting is positives, 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 negatives, positives, positives. But you cannot control if it's 10 people who of which seven are positive or one person taking seven tests that keep being positive and i know many people now who have had three or four or five tests and i'm hearing anecdotally about people who are testing multiple times and sometimes they're positive and sometimes they're negative all of these tests are being counted as cases even if it's just one person which skews the total dramatically by multiples of scale and again over time as more and more people test like students have to test every week some teachers have to test every week nurses have to test every week all of those tests are showing up as cases if anyone is positive they're showing up as multiple cases not one person multiple tests and if you doubt this my husband brian o'shea of centurion intelligence who's going to join us in a minute went on the COVID-19 tracking site and found them saying that they do not control for multiple tests. Um, they treat them as multiple cases. So that's my summary of how nonsensically this COVID data is being presented to you 